Aloha and welcome to a, another video for CIS 101 at Brigham Young University, Hawaii. This video is the first of looking at decision making with Perl. Now, we make decisions every day. Which path to go down, uh, to get to, to school, to go back home, to get to the store, what we're going to eat today, how we're going to dress, whom we're going to talk to, what work we're going to do. Decision making is a part of our everyday life. It helps if our computers can make decisions too. Sometimes we don't want to have to keep making the same decision over and over and over again. So it makes sense if we're always going to make the same decision given a certain set of conditions to just delegate that task to the computer. So how do we do that in Perl? Perl uses what's called if statements to set up decisions. And if statements look like this. If, and then in parentheses, we have some sort of condition or comparison. And then after the uh, close parentheses, we have these curly braces that enclose a set of instructions that are followed if the condition is met. So let's see, how do we set up these conditions? Conditions can be comparisons of either numbers or strings. So if we have values in a certain variable and we're trying to see if those variables match a certain value, we can set it up in a condition. We use symbols as comparison operators to compare numbers. Okay, these symbols are, look a lot like what you may have seen uh, in a math class. We have this uh, left uh, angle bracket, which is the less than sign, and then an uh, angle bracket and an equal sign to mean less than or equal to. Then the following Note, there are two equal signs for equal to. Uh, then we have greater than or equal to, greater than, and not equal to. We can use each of these in a condition statement or the condition clause as part of an if statement. Note, equal is not the same as equal equal. If you have num1 equal equal to, that is asking, is the value in num1 2? But if you have one equal sign or one equal symbol, as in the second example, that means the sign 2 as the value of num1. Okay, please pay attention to that subtle difference because it can make a big difference in your if statements. Okay. So, how would we set this up? If we wanted to say if the value of num1 is greater than or equal to 2, print hooray and add 2 to the value of num1. So we set up the condition if num1 is greater than or equal to 2, and then we begin with the curly brace, and we say print hooray semicolon, and then num1 equals num1 plus 2, close curly brace. Note a couple of things. Number one, the style recommended in your textbook is as follows. After we've set up the condition, we have the opening curly brace, then we go down to the next line, indent two spaces, and have your first statement. That ends with a semicolon, and then have on the, another line, have your next statement if you have one, and then have the closing curly brace. Okay, So this is the style that uh, your textbook recommends that you follow and how you'll be graded on your exam questions.